Hey wonderful teenagers! Being proactive means thinking and acting ahead of anticipated occasions. Not only is it a great approach for preventing more work down the roadway, but it can also be very essential for avoiding issues. To be proactive, start doing something about it, embracing your obligation, and managing your reactions. By doing things such as expecting your future and focusing on services rather than problems, you'll maintain a happier and more proactive outlook. Welcome to Teen Guide, the place that you can find your purpose, change your life, and build good habits. So make sure to hit subscribe, because you miss a lot, we got helpful videos just for you. In today's video, we will talk about how to be proactive, and let's go to the first step. Think of what is most likely to occur in your future. By considering possible problems that could arise, and be aware of possible future modifications, you'll be able to plan and act appropriately. For example, if you understand that you'll be going on holiday soon, begin putting aside money now for meals or fun activities to do while on vacation. Step 2. Stay ahead of less urgent jobs. By looking after routine everyday jobs instead of putting them off, you'll create less stress for yourself while also making certain those little jobs don't turn into a bigger problem. A little effort up front could save you from a bigger crisis later. Pay particular attention to preventative maintenance, whether that implies examining the fluids in your car, restocking your pantry, or reserving a little bit of cash in savings each week. Step 3. Prioritize the essential things. Having a relentless list of tasks to complete can be overwhelming, and it's likely to cause you to range from one job to the next without ever actually finishing one. Rather of trying to do whatever at once, focus on the things that are most important and go for achieving those. If your order of business consists of things such as cleaning out the closet, taking the cars and truck to get checked, and reorganizing the bedroom, you ought to concentrate on the most important thing, getting the car checked. Step 4. Evaluate your actions to see if they are working. Every once in a while, stop for a minute to reflect on what you've been doing. If you aren't reaching your objectives, consider how you might carry out jobs more effectively and develop a brand new strategy. Create a plan, list, or regular to achieve the task. Try to find steps in the process you can eliminate, consolidate, or shorten. Step 5. Take ownership of your problems. You are the only one who can achieve your objectives and fix your problems. While there are people in your life who will support you, you require to depend on yourself to accomplish success. When you run into issues, start taking the effort and welcome the difficulty. Rather than blaming somebody or something else when a problem develops, take ownership of the issue and work towards fixing it yourself. Step 6. Focus on what you can control. It's worthless to hang around worrying about things that you can't actively alter. Utilize your energy and inspiration to work on tackling jobs that you know you can accomplish. This will enable you to get far more done while feeling more positive. For instance, if you're stressing out about your grades, you can't get good grades. You can study for tests, make sure you're getting adequate sleep, and encourage yourself to take your grades seriously. Step 7. Set realistic goals for yourself. This is a great way to keep yourself motivated and moving forward. If you set goals that are out of reach, you're setting yourself up for dissatisfaction and are much less likely to be motivated to continue working towards your objective. Rather than informing yourself to lose all of your additional weight within a month, set an objective to swim or run a mile each day. Step 8. Get involved actively instead of just observing. Proactive people do not sit on the sidelines or just listen to other people's suggestions. Act and start actively participating, whether it's by providing input during job conferences or developing your own plans for household activities. Step 9. Stay consistent. Consistency in how you connect with others, along with the actions you take for yourself, is really essential. Know just how much you can manage and take small, constant actions towards your goals. You're going to dissatisfy yourself as well as others if you make guarantees you can't keep 
or set unrealistic expectations. Step 10. Hold yourself liable. When it comes to getting things done, you require to hold yourself to the job, making certain you accomplish it in a suitable quantity of time. This implies taking duty and providing each job a sense of seriousness. Think about telling another person all of the important things you're intending to hold yourself liable for. This person will help you stick to your goals and let you know when you might be doing much better. Step 11. Surround yourself with inspired people. To be proactive, you wish to hang out with people who will push you to take and stand out in action. If you're surrounded by driven, inspired people, you'll be more likely to stay motivated. If you've been spending time with somebody negative, lazy, or similarly unmotivated, it's time to put some range in between yourself and this person. Step 12. Focus on solutions rather than problems. While it can be simple to see issues as frustrating, negative hurdles, try to alter that frame of mind. Focus on ending up being a problem solver and figure out services to issues that you stumble upon. You'll find it much easier to come up with an option if you see issues as things that can be fixed. Step 13. Communicate calmly in times of anger or distress. If you discover yourself getting disturbed when talking with somebody, take a couple of deep breaths to relax and refocus. While it can be simple to snap in anger, it's much better to interact calmly and successfully. You can take deep breaths to soothe yourself down during any scenario where you're feeling upset, whether communicating with somebody or not. Step 14. Avoid jumping to negative conclusions. While it can be simple to make a snap judgment, it's essential to get all the details before concluding. Keeping an open outlook will help you believe more reasonably and develop much better solutions. Possibly someone didn't respond to your text message instead of assuming they just do not want to speak to you, consider that they might be super busy or don't have their phone on them. Step 15. Put yourself in others' shoes for a different perspective. Think about the other individual's perspective if you are having trouble understanding someone's side of things or simply want to get a more precise picture. Compassion will help prevent you from just seeing one side of things. If a staff member or colleague is always revealing up late to work, attempt to comprehend why this might be occurring. Try seeing the issue from their viewpoint. An expert tip says, 90% of what people do or say is about them, not you. Once you comprehend that, you can flip a circumstance around and much better comprehend why the other person did or stated what they did. Step 16. Do constructive activities when you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious. Rather than being bogged down by sensations of stress and anxiety or an unhealthy quantity of overthinking, attempt distracting yourself by getting things done. Directing your energy into finishing small tasks will assist you to feel efficient and positive. For example, if you can't stop worrying and worrying about whether you'll be getting a raise at work, set your mind to easier jobs such as fixing up the lawn or doing the meals. Speaking to people you trust about the important things that are worrying you can also be an excellent way to get some recommendations while alleviating some of your tension. Another expert tip says, when you're overwhelmed attempt to get out of your head. Throwing cold water on your face can decrease your heart rate and anxiety. You can also go outdoors and get some workouts or discover green images. The color green can lower the stress response in your system and help you unwind and not be as reactive. Step 17. Ask yourself what you can learn from your setbacks. If you go through a failure, try to discover from the experience. Believe about how you might go about things differently. Step 18. Maintain a positive outlook. Not only is a positive outlook essential for remaining healthy and pleased, but it's also likewise a key aspect in being proactive. Instead of attaching negative vibes to problems, try to remain positive and see them in various lights. When you begin believing negative thoughts, try to stop them as quickly as you discover. Change them with inspirational, positive thoughts instead. Apologizing to your friend can be even more difficult than recognizing you've acted improperly. 
To truly apologize to your friend, you have to be genuine, admit your mistakes, and let your friend understand just how much she or he means to you. This may sound easier said than done, but if you swallow your pride and show some genuine regret you'll have a real apology prepared. Hey wonderful teenagers, welcome to Teen Guide, the first channel talking about teenagers' life, problem, health, and habits. In today's video, we will talk about how to apologize to a friend. Let's go! The first step, accept full responsibility for the events. You have to accept full duty for what you have actually done to him or her if you really desire to apologize to your friend. If you do not think you should really say sorry, see that your friend for doing something else, or believe that your friend is overreacting and being significant, then do not even trouble. You either apologize totally or you do not ask forgiveness at all, got it? Say something like, I know I actually let you down when I didn't go to your birthday party. I understand how much it implied to you. You can also say, I am so sorry that I kissed your crush recently. I do not understand what I was believing, and I've been kicking myself over it since. Your relationship indicates method more to me than a dumb kid. If you're making excuses during your apology, you're a bad friend. End of story. Do not say, I'm sorry that I didn't go to your party, but giving an excuse for what you did is even worse than not apologizing at all because it indicates you're not really that sorry. Step 2. Say you're sorry. That's right. This is the most important part. Suck it up and spit it out. Say, I'm actually sorry that I did that. Or, I'm really sorry that I. Make it clear that you are sorry about something that you've done to harm your friend. This might be the hardest task, so take a deep breath, make eye contact with your pal, and say that you are really sorry. Don't say something like, I'm sorry that you were so upset, this is some awful, passive-aggressive crap that generally blames them, not you. Like making excuses, it makes you a bad buddy. Step 3. Apologize for how you've made your friend feel. After you accept responsibility for what you've done and have said that you are sorry, you have to acknowledge that you really harm your friend. Show them that you're aware of how you have made your friend feel. This will make your pal see that you have put a lot of ideas and effort into considering every angle of what you've done and that you feel truly dreadful about your actions. Say something like, I can't imagine how dissatisfied you were when I didn't appear at your birthday celebration. You have been preparing it for such a long period of time and I understand you desired it to be ideal. Or, I understand you were incredibly harmed when I kissed Colin. You have had a crush on him for months and should have been sad. Step 4. Tell them their friendship is more vital than your pride or faults. Let your friend see that your friendship is more essential than anything else in the world and that you know you need to redefine your priorities in the future. Your buddy must see that whatever you did wasn't worth it and that you want that you might start over and put your pal first in mind instead. This is the time for I'm your buddy, but I didn't act like it. Say, I missed your birthday celebration. I should not have done that. I committed to you and dropped it, but I won't take my guarantee so lightly once again. Say, I can't believe what I made with Colin. He implies absolutely nothing to me and you mean everything to me. Our relationship is more important to me than any romantic relationship. Step 5. Find a way to make it as much as them. Once again, don't try and purchase them out with expensive things. Things don't create relationships, discussions do. Take them out for dinner, make plans to hang out quickly, and return to friendship. This is your friend, and it shouldn't be difficult to make time for them if you truly appreciate their feelings. Say, I'll never flake on you again. When I stayed I'll be somewhere, I'll be there. Say, I'll never attempt to even flirt with someone you have a crush on. I understand just how much your crushes indicate to you and I will not interfere with your romantic life once again. Step 6. Ask for forgiveness. After you've said all of the things you've had to state, ask your friend, will you forgive me? Ideally, your friend will see just how much your friendship suggests to you and will forgive you right now. Then you can hug, show how delighted you are, and be eliminated that you made it through the apology. And if your friend needs a little bit more time and won't forgive you, a minimum of you can tell yourself that you attempted. There is a bit more you can do than use a sincere apology. If they do not take it, that is on them, not you, and you shouldn't keep pushing them to forgive you. It won't work. An easy can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Will mean the world. Nobody likes requesting forgiveness, that's what makes it so significant when you do. Since you're too happy, it's important, don't skip this step just. Step 7. Always apologize in person. Unless you and your friend live far away from each other, your best bet is to say sorry in person. Anything else could be considered lame, and make you look like a lame friend. Sending flowers or gifts is okay. However, if you do this kind of thing rather than talking to your friend face to deal with, you're just concealing behind gifts. Call or Skype them if your friend is truly far away. It's not perfect, 
however, it is way much better than neglecting things until you see each other once again. Step 8, let tension and moods die down before moving in with an apology. Is it quite small, like disappointing approximately your friend's celebration when you said you would, or is it something major, like talking to your friend's sweetheart? If it's small, then you must act quickly and ask forgiveness from your friend as quickly as you both have some spare time. Just get it finished with. If your friend requires a long time for her injuries to heal, then give her a few days to cool down, your apology isn't going to mean much if they wish to beat the crap out of you whenever they see you talking. You need to know your friend better than the majority of people. Is she or he the kind of person who requires a great deal of time to cool off, or who forgives pretty easily? How bad was it last time you hung out? Simply chill out and hold on if you know your pal is going to be under an amazing amount of stress or is dealing with something individual. Your apology, remember, has to do with them, not about you. Step 9, know exactly what you're apologizing for instead of just lobbing out a generic sorry. Apologies ought to be sincere. They should also tick off the following boxes. Taking complete obligation for what you've done. Observing how it's made the other individual feel. Including the words I'm sorry. Demonstrating how grateful you are for the friendship. Planning to make things up or be much better next time. Step 10, own up and apologize, no matter how hard it appears. Do not dilly-dally and wait for your friend to approach you when you find that it's time to say sorry. If your friend approaches you about what you've done, then you already run the risk of appearing like a wimp or a bad or good friend, so strike while the iron is hot, however when your friend has cooled off. Make asking forgiveness to your friend a priority. If you don't care about doing it quickly, why do you even wish to apologize? Apologies can be difficult. They're needed. Overcome your fears and pride and remember that you hurt somebody you enjoy. Step 11, apologize to your friend over the phone. If you and your friend live far apart, then the very best method to ask forgiveness may be over the phone. Simply call your friend, be sincere, and do the very same things you would perform as an individual, accept duty, say sorry, assure to never do it again, ask for forgiveness. Due to the fact that it'll be more challenging to read your friend and see how he or she is really feeling, this may be a little more difficult. Remain on the line when you're done, letting the discussion rely on other subjects like old friends would. Do not apologize over voicemail it is insincere and just hacking. If they do not call you back, regrettable. They're not prepared for the apology, and you need to enter individual. Step 12, never ever state sorry over text or Facebook. Sending out a text message or Facebook message simply isn't going to cut it if you're truly sorry for something you've done. This is pretty impersonal and does not reveal much effort on your part. Sure, it's harder to suck it up and call the individual or talk to him or her face to face, however, this reveals that you really appreciate the friendship. Apologies are about you being sorry for your mistakes it is your task, for that reason, to go ask forgiveness face to face as a grown guy or female would. Hey wonderful teenagers! Dating can be uncomfortable, specifically after the very first date. Identifying how to act ways figuring out how you feel. Consider whether you wish to head out again, and, from there, interact with the other individual. While interactions can often be uncomfortable, a little etiquette can assist you in efficiently navigate the days following a first date. Welcome to Teen Guide, the place that you can find your purpose, change your life and build good habits. So make sure to hit subscribe, because you miss a lot, we got helpful videos just for you. In today's video, we will talk about how to act after the first date, and let's go to the first step. Remember it's only one date. People tend to judge quickly after a very first date. When choosing your feelings, have some point of view. It's just one date. Whether you felt so bad about it or had a great time, this is simply one encounter, and you can't make any sweeping decisions. Do not choose it isn't worth pursuing if there was extremely little stimulate. Unless there were extremely obvious red flags, consider providing the person a second possibility, if you had a decent time. If it went well, remember it was only one date, and the other person might not have felt the same way. You're not in a relationship yet. So try to take things one day at a time before leaping to conclusions about where the relationship's going. Step 2, try not to overanalyze. It's essential to analyze your sensations about the person after a date, however overanalyzing can do more harm than good. Attempt not to obsess over the meaning of every hand touch, hug, or other gesture. 
While small things can often indicate a character characteristic, they can likewise be meaningless. If your date checked a text throughout supper, you may be wondering if this means they are an inconsiderate person. If this only happened as soon as throughout the whole date, they may have been waiting or inspecting the time on an important call. In the meantime, try not to think of the text event too much. Step 3. Decide if you want a second date. Sometimes, you know for sure you want a second date, but sometimes it's more confusing. There is no pressure to go on a second date if you don't wish to, however, it's worth giving somebody a possibility if you had a decent time. Nevertheless, if you were extremely unpleasant or didn't have any enjoyable, you may want to move on to another person. Step 4. Find out any possible red flags. Often, warnings show up early. This might be an indication this individual is not worth pursuing if your date engaged in habits that appeared improper or rude on more than one occasion. For instance, maybe they rolled their eyes or laughed at a major remark you made. Possibly they hardly talked. Possibly they just made you unpleasant throughout the night. Trust your impulse. If they have a bad ambience, do not keep seeing somebody. Step 5. Consider the level of attraction. A second date may not be worth it if you felt no attraction to the person at all whatsoever. Keep in mind you might not be extremely brought into the person right away, specifically if you're worried. If you felt the person was good looking, even if you weren't swept your feet, it might be worth a second date to see if the destination develops. Step 6. Send out a casual text stating you enjoyed it. This is typically best if you're interested in going out again. You do not need to gush about what a good time you had, but simply send out something simple. For example, I had a fun time with you yesterday. Hope we can do it again quickly. There's no requirement to wait the customary three days, as this is no longer considered dating gospel. When you get home from the date or the next day, you can send the text. If they made it home safely, you can also text your date to discover out. This will reveal your care and concern for the other individual's well-being and may motivate further discussions. You may consider sending out a text within the first 24 hours after the date if the date went well. It's okay to be the one to do this and open the possibilities for more discussion. Try saying something like, I had a fun time the other night. I hope you're doing well today. If you have time, let's choose coffee on Tuesday. Step 7. Communicate delicately online. You should just do this if the two of you already follow each other on social networks. Attempt responding to tweets or posting on their Facebook a little bit more if you're interested in them. This can show you've been considering them and wish to head out again. If you do not already engage with them online, however, all of a sudden including them on Facebook might appear a bit much. Ask to see them again if there was a stimulate. Say so if you want to see them again. Do not wait too long, as this can feel like playing video games. The objective is to reveal your interest without discovering you as needy or desperate. Sometime within the next 24 hours, send out a text that states something like, I had a fun time last night. I'd enjoy seeing you once again. When are you complimentary? Step 8. Let them understand respectfully if there was no connection. This is particularly important if the other person has been texting you revealing interest. After about 24 hours, send a courteous text saying something like, I had a truly great time meeting you, but I just didn't feel a connection. If you did not feel a connection, then it is unlikely that the other person did either. If you are not sure about whether or not the person is interested in you, then try to ask them in a considerate way by the end of the night. Step 9. Accept rejection. In some cases, the other individual does not feel the same way about you. Attempt to accept it with grace if somebody turns you down for a second date. Send them a text thanking them for letting you know there wasn't a connection and wanting them well. For example, say something like, I appreciate you letting me know how you feel. Best of luck in the dating game. Step 10. 
Do not text excessively. You might be texting too much if somebody is not reacting to your texts quickly and offering short replies. It's okay to text a lot after a very first if the person is motivating discussion, but if you're getting silence on their end, it might be best to tone it down. You don't wish to seem overeager, as this could put somebody off. Step 11. Avoid call. For the most part, people seldom make calls anymore, specifically in the dating video game. Texts are typically the preferred approach of communication, so adhere to texting your date instead of calling them. However, if you're older and do not utilize cell phones, calling might still be appropriate. If your date has actually chosen telephone call formally, calling may be a much better path in this case. Step 12. Stay away from their social networks. Again, it's alright to connect on social media if you're already linked there, and it might be a good way to learn the essentials about a person. Talk to the individual directly rather than find out about them. Make sure that you are sensible about anything you publish on social networks as well, or do not post anything. Your very first date with somebody ought to be between you and the other person, so you might want to prevent publishing about it on social media completely. Step 13. Stay connected with other prospective matches. Even if it worked out, one date does not indicate you're in a relationship. Keep in touch with them if you're talking to other people you're interested in. This relationship might not work out, so it's all right to keep looking in case things fall through. And because you are sticking to the end, we have a pro tip for you. Ask your date to do something together that they are interested in. Ask them to go with you to a local funny show coming up if your date told you they like comedy programs. This reveals to them that you listened and are interested in progressing with them. While you are a teenager, lots of amazing opportunities for success are given to you. Taking on the best quantity of responsibility and independence can push you towards ending up being a successful teen. Hey wonderful teenagers, welcome to Teen Guide, the first channel talking about teenagers' life, problem, health, and habits. In today's video, we will talk about how to be a successful teenager. Let's go. The first step, participate in after-school activities. Schools offer students opportunities for remaining active. How you use your time needs to depend on you. Select an activity that attracts you such as sports, scholastic clubs, or special interest clubs. Select one that plays to your interests. After school activities develop character through team effort, time management, and competition. Don't be too worried if you aren't great at what you like. The important thing is passion, which will drive you to put in your best effort. Step 2. Volunteer. Giving your time to your community is a noble activity with several advantages. An offering can teach you occupational skills such as responsibility or time management. Step 3. Use your summer time for academic programs and camps. Getting a head start at college could mean compromising, or shortening, your summertime getaway. Different universities use programs for future college students based upon interests such as journalism, photography, art, or sports. These programs offer teens the opportunity to earn college credit, experience dormitory life, and see a university town. Research various programs. Get all of the information, then figure out which one is the very best option for you. Check the deadlines and requirements. Prevent entering into a problem because of a basic mistake, and you will have a good time. Step 4. Shadow an expert for a field you wish to pursue. Developing a resume, getting experience, and earning letters of recommendation can begin at an extremely young age. A lot of teenagers have actually a wanted career path. Luckily, some professionals allow teens to visit offices for some hands-on experience. The non-paid experience can construct character and open up future opportunities. Make phone calls and office seats to find a company ready to allow you to watch. If they understand someone whom you can watch, ask the household. Step 5. Set goals. One element of becoming effective is to look forward in life. Making and fulfilling objectives inspires you to progress. A crucial element of setting objectives is getting organized and examining your interests. As a school counselor, talking to a parent or a mentor for support, guidance is very practical. Ask yourself important concerns such as what do I take pleasure in doing? What do I wish to be proficient at? Or where do I see myself 5 to 10 years from now? Do some research study to see what it requires to reach that objective. 
learn how to simplify into mini goals that are reached as you advance. Step 6. Understand and build your credit score. Your credit report is the measurement of how reliable you are to companies that determine loans you receive, enable you to live in their apartment building or decide your rate of interest. Even though getting a charge card at a young age can be on the hands of a mom and dad, it is up to the teenager to use it properly and comprehend that it's not just money on a card, it is a guarantee in between the teen and a third party. Know that credit is a revolving pattern, use a charge card for something you want to pay and buy off in a self-managed time frame. Using a credit card takes obligation and discipline, these qualities likewise develop other good practices. Step 7. Continue your education. The typical teenager goes through two major educational turning points, graduating from high school and finishing college. Teenagers go through various phases, and education is frequently put aside. Nevertheless, to be effective, education should be deemed an investment for the future and a tool to show teenagers how to be inquisitive. Moreover, better education can cause more work chances, so make sure to pursue what fits your interests and goals. Step 8. Build strong relationships. Teenagers go through a lot of changes, and these modifications can change relationships rapidly and abruptly. Being a successful teen means knowing how to pursue a great relationship, one where there is the possibility for both fun and future. Step 9. Get a job. Having your own task builds favorable character and will help you develop. Even if moms and dads offer you cash, making your own income puts you on a path to success by enabling you to find out time management, task obligation, leadership abilities, team effort, and life abilities in the real world. Making your own income puts cash in your pockets, and what you do with your earnings is up to you. Step 10. Track your expenses. Paychecks, presents, and allowances will be your income sources as a teenager. Discovering to handle money starts with tracking how you invest that income. Produce a cash diary where you write down all of your spendings for an offer time period, either weekly, monthly, or annual. Assess what you invest by deciding what is needed, such as gas, cars and truck insurance, phone costs, and what is entertainment, such as motion picture tickets, personal items, going out. Producing this journal will help you picture where your money goes and can set you on track to create a budget plan and cost savings. Step 11. Save money. Once you generate income, it is extremely appealing to utilize it immediately. And as a teenager, it is simple to overlook saving money. To be more effective, discover that cash can be saved for more crucial spending opportunities. To assist you to conserve, open up a savings account. Banks can provide lots of opportunities to teens. Get recommendations and research first before opening any accounts. Figure out a regular monthly spending plan that will assist you to put aside cash once you have one. More than likely a cosigner or mom and dad will have access to your account activity when you begin. Utilize this as a knowing opportunity and ask for them to keep you in check of what you spend. Step 12. Control impulse buying. Purchasing is generally easier than saving. Little purchases can take a toll on your cost savings, and generally, those purchases might have been avoided. These impulse purchases are tough for both teens and grown-ups, so managing these impulses at a young age assists guarantee better money management throughout your life. Put yourself to the test and wait to purchase products. Often, giving yourself a week will show you that you didn't truly need the product, or the item would have been put on sale. Step 13. Become more independent. Independence is very important to a teen. It comes as a need over time, but when teenagers start off being independent, it generally comes as a privilege from their moms and dads. Figure out your house dynamics, and offer locations where your self-reliance becomes handy to your home, for example, cooking your meals, cleaning up after yourself, taking care of more youthful siblings, asking for less supervision, or getting a part-time task. Step 14. Learn how to use several forms of transportation. Obtaining from place to place does not constantly imply driving, however, as a teenager, driving is a substantial step in duty and independence. Make sure to take any courses and indicates to get a motorist's license. Driving is not the only way to get around. Cities have public transportation that can be both accessible and low cost for teens. Learn the paths needed to get you from location to place. It will teach you time management and persistence. Step 15. Travel more often. As you grow up, your city gets smaller sized, and the world grows. Household trips assist you to explore certain regions, however handling world travel likewise assists develop duty and self-reliance. A younger person has more outlets to travel by such as research study abroad, language exchange, or volunteer programs. Reconnect with a summer season checkout if you have a household in distant places. The chance to take a trip provides experiences that construct terrific character. Step 16. Know when to ask for help and advice. 
Being independent and responsible does not indicate being alone. Handling brand new tasks and meeting objectives will be an effort. Asking people for assistance shows maturity and confidence. Seek advice from moms and dads, older brother or sisters, mentors at work, instructors, or somebody whom you trust. Opening up channels of interaction at a young age is a great practice for success. Hey wonderful teenagers! If you're trying to inspire someone to quit drinking, trying to inspire people to donate to a homeless shelter, or trying to influence your workers to provide it their all, a few easy methods can be used. Let us assist you to get begun if you want to bring inspiration to someone and know how to inspire people. The first step is, be genuine. If you appear phony or insincere, nobody will be motivated. If you are attempting to be someone, they would never be impressed with you. They have to think that you think what you're stating and you have your own idea in life which you think in living. If you do not believe me, you're just peddling snake oil as it were, then why should they think you? The very best way to be real and reveal that this matters to you too is to make it actually matter to you. Be enthusiastic and toss yourself into what you do. After all, it's your life. Program a real interest in people by wondering about their lives and asking questions. You can find out a lot from anyone. Ditch personal splendor. Try not to use yourself as an example when inspiring people. This tends to make it appear like you're making things all about how cool you are. Step 2. Stay emotionally strong. Never let the people you're attempting to inspire see you get truly upset or actually angry. People get worried when carrying out hard tasks, and they require to understand that someone is in control of the situation. Step 3. Expect their best efficiency. Do not set the bar low. Don't disrespect them by imitating you believe they can't achieve anything. Anticipate and reveal to them that you anticipate that they can do great, but not impossible, things. It is essential to only request for things that they can achieve, and the bar is typically best corrected above objectives they have formally achieved. Step 4. Acknowledge problems. If there are hurdles, acknowledge them. Identify what they are. You ought to also determine how those hurdles can be managed. Emphasize that they are surmountable. This will offer your audience confidence that you are prepared. Step 5. Make those problems appear smaller. When you've acknowledged the issues that you may deal with, make those problems appear not only insurmountable but little. Compare them to other problems that have been faced or discuss why they may not even be problems at all. Step 6. Draw on cultural examples. Examples from pop culture or history are a great method to motivate people for all sorts of functions. You can utilize inspiring movies, historic figures, quotes, or perhaps obstacles that they themselves have overcome in the past. Step 8. Provide hope. Hope is the most important thing for inspiring people. You have to give them hope. They require to think that there is a goal, a light at the end of the tunnel, a benefit for the battles that they'll face. How you do this will depend on your circumstance, just make sure not to end on a down note. Step 9. Lead by example. The very best way to influence your staff to work harder or push through a rough duration is to lead by example. When you can, take on more work than you have to and assist them with their own work. An active manager who works best along with them is more motivating than one who just sits behind a desk. Step 10. Be their supporter. Ensure that their needs are met. Show them that you care about their individual wellness. When they do something that of recognizing, acknowledge it. When they deserve it, promote them. All of this makes them want to do more for you because they understand that you're going to defend them. Step 11. Make them proud. Get them purchase the work that they do. Make them pleased with the product they make or the service they offer. They'll be much more most likely to work tough and strive for excellence if they take pride in what they do. 
Step 12. Provide on your promises. When you guarantee them something or provide a reward, you have to make good on that pledge. Failing to fulfill expectations will only make them wary of your future guarantees and they'll be unlikely to take incentives seriously any more to help others. Step 13. Produce a story. Give them a legend, a fairy tale, where the issue that needs to be conquered, homelessness, hunger, poverty, and so on, is a dragon to be killed. Produce an epic feel around the job that needs to be completed. Step 14. Interest their ego. Next, make them the hero of the story you've developed. Tell them that they are the only ones who can overcome this terrible obstacle. Make them feel not just necessary however vital. And, here's the secret, make them seem like they are the only one s who can help. If they believe that someone else will step in to be the hero, people frequently won't assist. Step 15. Feed their compassion. Utilize their emotions to show them why their aid is so required. Put them in the emotional place of the individual that requires aid. Be as descriptive as possible, the much easier it is for them to picture, the more likely they are to want to assist. Show the benefits. Let them feel like helping outcomes in good things for them. Describe for them not just the good sensation they'll have but likewise the physical rewards they'll see, good resume content, business incentives, marketing opportunities, etc. Step 16. Listen to them. If someone is having severe issues, whether they reveal it or not they are most likely already judging themselves really roughly. This means that one of the most efficient ways to help them is to simply listen to them. Step 17. Have compassion with them. Show them that you care. Do not judge or shame them. Have compassion and let them know that you comprehend that the errors they made were only human. They require to see that you are on their side, even if that side ends up being doing the opposite of what they wish to do. Step 18. Construct their sense of worth. People who make constantly bad decisions tend to think really little of themselves. Usually, if you've made some truly poor choices, do you understand it? Step 19. Help them embrace faults. Some people believe that they can't get rid of challenges since they have too many faults. Help them to understand that everybody has faults which we all need to work around them or overcome. Show them that excellence isn't needed but that effort counts for everything. When you understand you are at fault for a problem, the mature and responsible thing to do is stand up and own up to the error, accept the repercussions, and be part of the solution. Talk to the persons and inform them what went wrong and say sorry. Hey wonderful teenagers, welcome to Teen Guide, the first channel talking about teenagers' life, problem, health, and habits. And in today's video, we will talk about how to accept blame when you deserve it. Are you ready? The first step. Recognize your wrong. To accept blame, you must acknowledge your wrongdoing. Review your words or actions and understand what you did inadequately or mistakenly. Gain some clearness about the occasion and why you may have done what you did. Confessing you were wrong doesn't imply that you're inefficient or weak. Being able to own up to your mistakes takes a lot of courage and self-awareness, it suggests maturity. For example, if you said you would pick up the dry cleaning but didn't, don't make an excuse. Just own that you said you would do something, and you didn't pull through. Step 2. Don't try to move the blame. Keep the concentrate on you. You might share the blame and the other individual may have said or done wrong things also, however, focus just on your part. The fact that you accept your blame doesn't indicate you're free to blame other people for their parts, just. If you own up to your part, the other person might not own up to theirs. Even if they do not, know that you did the ideal thing by confessing your wrongs. Remember that you can just manage your actions, not anybody else's. For example, if a task didn't get finished and you belong to the issue, own up to your part. Don't begin blaming other people, even if they became part of the problem. Step 3. Say something sooner rather than later. Waiting to see how things clean is a bad idea. As quickly as a circumstance begins being unpleasant, own up to your duty in developing it. The quicker the issue is determined, the faster a resolution is possible, and that minimizes effects. If you let someone down, talk to them as soon as you can and let them understand how you feel. Say, I was going to go to your occasion, however, I didn't make it and it's my fault. Step 4. Confess that you were incorrect. 
Admitting you were wrong shows that you're prepared to accept that you are imperfect and make mistakes. It can be challenging to admit your wrongs, but doing so shows others that you're ready to take duty for what you do. For instance, say, I was incorrect to yell at you yesterday. Even if I'm upset, I don't want to yell. Step 5. Apologize. Make a sincere apology if the scenario necessitates one. Accept your incorrect and make it clear that you are sorry for whatever hurt or issue it caused. Be thoughtful in your apology and happy to confess your fault. For example, say, I'm sorry I screwed up the job. It's my fault, and I take obligation for things going wrong. Step 6. Validate the person's feelings. If the other person is upset, be understanding. Verify how they feel and what they might be experiencing. Start by showing their feelings or words to show that you understand, and let them understand that you understand their feelings. Say, I can tell you're dissatisfied. I would be, too. Step 7. Propose a solution. Part of accepting blame and taking responsibility can include making up for your error. Whatever it is, reveal that you're willing to alter to make things much better. For example, if you're to blame for something at work, offer to remain later on and repair your mistake. Say that it will be various next time and mean it if you mess something up with your family or pals. Step 8. Accept consequences Accepting obligation for your habits might be scary, especially if you know there will be consequences. Try to grow from the experience and avoid repeating your errors. For instance, coming clean might imply you face effects at work or school. Or, you might have to fess up to something in your household or partner that you know will make them upset. You might know some reaction will take place, however, do the right thing. Step 9. Reflect on your behavior. Acknowledge your mistake and assess what might have contributed to it. Maybe you lashed and had a difficult day out at someone. It is simple to displace your anger onto people who had absolutely nothing to do with your tiff. Perhaps you jumped to conclusions and were incorrect. Whatever it is you did, Consider it and try to make any necessary modifications as an outcome. For example, if you forgot something since you were hurried, attempt to decrease or enable more time for activities. Step 10. Get accountable. Have somebody in your life who can assist in keeping you accountable for your actions and words. This might imply you have a friend who calls you out or you meet somebody to talk about accountability. Having somebody to talk with about taking duty can assist you to handle it much better and faster. For example, meet someone each week and discuss what you're succeeding in and what you're dealing with. When the other requirements to accept obligation for wrongs, let each other understand. Step 11. Move on from the situation. No one's ideal and everybody makes mistakes. Don't stick around on a mistake or continually attempt to make it approximately the individual you injure. Do your best to move on from the event once you've confessed your mistake and made amends. Even if you made a huge error, do not regret yourself permanently. Accept what took place, learn from it, then move on. As soon as you've taken all the steps to make things right, do not live in regret or embarrassment. Let go of what took place. If your guilt over what happened is triggering you a great deal of distress, or you just can't seem to carry on, think about seeing a counselor help you work through it. So that's it, hope you see these steps are helpful and if it is, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. See you in another video.